Carol Channing? We did a Carol Channing special. And but it was in the context of the Andy Williams shows that I met Jerry Prentio, with whom, you know, we grew tandem Tell and TAT. Tell us about Jerry Prentio, if, if you will. Well, uh, an entrepreneur for sure. A great, great entrepreneur. He was a junior uh, agent uh, at MCA. I went to Lou Wasserman. We needed some help. There were. Uh, there was an act called the Stewed Prunes in New York. Uh, an actor by the name of Dick Libertini, who became very well One known. Mac McIntyre Dixon, and a girl that worked only a little bit in the act, whose name was Linda Lavin, who became a big star, had her own show. And, uh, and they were the Stewed Prunes. The two guys were the Stewed Prunes, and she provided some help to them. And they were, I thought, absolute genius. They worked largely in pantomime. It's very hard to describe how, how wonderful, funny I thought they were. Uh, and then there was a, another a team, Marion Mercer and R.J. Brown. R. G. Brown. And, uh, and they were a stand-up comedy team. Marion Mercer went on to become a very important player in television and films and, and so forth. And in fact forth. worked for you uh, subsequently? Yes, several, many times. Uh, and R.G. Brown, I've lost track of R.G. Brown, but he was, they, were, they were wonderful. So I wanted to write them into the show as Wall Lake characters who came from Andy's hometown and the stewed prunes in some other context. But Bob Finkel uh, auditioned them and didn't get it, didn't care for them, uh, and Andy Williams. Uh, so I went to Lou Wasserman and I said, help me. Lou Wasserman then? Lou Wasserman then and now. <laughs> Lou Wasserman ran uh, MCA before they bought Review Studios and then became the colossus that is Universal Pictures. Uh, but to, uh, I wanted to book uh, Marion Mercer and R.G. Brown someplace and book the Stewed Prune someplace so that I could invite Finkel and, uh, and Andy to come and see how an audience accepted them and have them sell themselves that way as opposed to a cold audition room. And, uh, and they assigned Jerry Parencio to help me. And Jerry Parencio booked R.G. Brown and Marion Mercer uh, at Ye Little Club, Marshall Edson's Ye Little Club on La Cienega, and booked uh, the stewed prunes into the troubadour. And uh, I could never get Andy and Finkel to understand the stewed prunes, though they killed an audience. They didn't understand how we could use them on the show, so we weren't successful selling them, but we did sell R.G. Brown and Mary Mercer. They became a part of the Andy Williams show as characters from Wall Lake, Iowa. But that's how I met Jerry Parencio and knew from that experience on, you know, if I ever got to a place where I, I, I needed, or it was time to have a business head, uh, I wanted Jerry. What did you see there? What did you recognize in him? Just, you know, the word creative is, uh, is so misused in my business. Over there, was, there is the creative side, and then there is the other. There, there are the others. And uh, there is more creativity in Jerry Parencio and a number of other executives that I have met who are never considered part of the creative community than there is in, you know, three-fifths of the creative community. So, I mean, creativity is everywhere, everywhere. It always seemed that uh, Jerry Parencio could see a little further ahead than most people. Yeah, did. in a business sense and uh, cultural slash business sense, he had great and has great vision. 